We've been building up to this for 12 whole months now, but it's finally time to discover the best snooker shot of 2022 and the best fluke of the year as well. And we're going to do this by attempting to recreate the A to Z of best shots from 2022 as accurately as possible and in the fewest possible attempts, hopefully without a pigeon in sight. We're beginning with Mark Williams, but not with the pink, we're going to save that for later. Shot A is a massive swerve. To play a shot like this, you need to strike down on the cue ball with a lot of left hand side and a small amount of backspin. It's a bit difficult to judge where this goes, so I was pretty happy to get it first time. Shot B comes from Ronnie O'Sullivan during the World Championships. Not only does he manage to pot this red, he also manages to find a way to just about finish on the black. This allows him to make a clearance and win a crucial frame against John Higgins. Not only did this one make a big difference in a World Championship semi-final, as you can see it's very difficult to strike the cue ball hard enough to get it in the right place. I was happy to get this in three attempts, not quite how Ronnie did it. Shot C comes from Mark Allen at the German Masters, and although he may be on an outside table, he still manages to pull off this wonder shot by potting the pink and playing the cue ball all the way around the angles for the only red he could really get on. This shot's very difficult because you need to get a lot of left hand side on the cue ball without stunning it too much like I did on my first few attempts, because you end up going close to the middle pocket or possibly going in off or hitting the jaw. I remember this shot being difficult when I first tried it in the German Masters video. Unfortunately I don't think my cushions are quite as slidey as what you get on TV, so I couldn't get the right side of the red, which was a little disappointing. Shot D is a Zhaoxing Tong plant from distance that he not only manages to pot, but at the same time screws the cue ball all the way back into bulk. This shot is so difficult, all I'm really trying to do here is hit the first red in the rough direction of the pocket and screw the cue ball back as far as I can at the same time. I'm then just hoping if I keep playing it in roughly the right direction, then eventually the red will go in the pocket, but I didn't really know how long this was going to take. All things considered, seven attempts wasn't bad, although I was about a foot short with the cue ball. Mark Selby makes his first appearance on this list for shot E after he snookers himself in the pack of reds. Not only does he manage to escape from this snooker around four cushions and hit the yellow, he also manages to snooker his opponent back. I remember this being the most painful shot of the year as it's a real stretch and you have to put quite a lot of weight on your fingers. I didn't think I got anywhere near it on my first attempt, I'm actually looking at the video because I didn't want to turn my head around, and then I saw I got it pretty much perfect. Shot F comes from the Players' Championships as Neil Robertson manages to cannon the brown off the cushion that he needs to win the match against Kyron Wilson. Until I realised this just needs topspin not sidespin, I really struggled with it in the Players' Championship video, but I've got a pretty good first time here. Shot G comes from Kurt Mafflin with his impressive red down the side cushion at the European Mars series, whatever it was called. Either way, this helped him win the match against Judd Trump. I'm not entirely sure why Kurt chose to play this red in this way. Maybe he was just confident about it, but I think it would have been a little bit easier if he just ran it through and played for the pink in the middle, and then he wouldn't have had to hit it so hard. Either way, this is how he played it and he got it perfect, so we've got to get it as well. Powering the shot down the rail definitely makes it one of the hardest shots of the year, so seven attempts was probably pretty good with this one. Shot H is another decisive pot, this time from Joe O'Connor. He needed blue or higher off this red in order to go on and win the frame, and he managed to do incredibly well with a red this close to the cushion. There's a little bit of angle, so it's actually not too difficult to get the cue ball out and down the table. Where it becomes difficult is how hard you have to play it to do that.
I was using a small amount of right hand side and backspin but it's possible Joe was just playing this as a screw shot because he didn't quite get out as far which is probably why the white just kept running on here. More ridiculous cushion shots now with shot I, Kyron Wilson's incredible pink. Not only does he manage to pot this pink, he also manages to screw the cue ball around the cushions to get in perfect position on the black. This one needs a lot of right hand side and backspin to get the cue ball to go around the angles far enough to get in position on the black. When I first tried this it actually took me 40 attempts, although I did pot it after 7, but I just didn't play it well enough to get the cue ball further down the table than the blue spot. So because of this I definitely think it's one of the most difficult shots of the year and even though it's an exhibition shot it's going to be up there come the end. I was pretty happy with my 11th attempt, I didn't quite go far enough to down the table but I could still easily pot the black with the rest. And with the super hard shots on this video that's good enough. For shot J we're going to the World Championships with Zhao Tong, who needs snookers against Stephen Maguire and manages to get one in the most incredible way. This is probably the most difficult snooker of the year to get, although there is a shot coming up later also in the World Championships that's probably a challenge to it. But that's difficult in a different way. Here I've got to get a lot of backspin on the cue ball to make it travel along the cushion. If I put a little bit too much or a little bit too little on it won't go in behind the black. This one's definitely going to be marked down as well because I put the black a little bit too far away from the cushion. It looks a little bit different on my table because it's at a different angle but I think it's about half a ball too far away. So maybe if I had put the black in the right place I would have found it a little bit harder but I was pretty happy with 9 attempts. Shot K is from Fan Zhen Zhi who won his first ever tournament this year beating Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final of the European Masters and this red helped him along the way. In fact this final was so close had he missed the red and left it on he could have easily ended up losing to Ronnie. But although this shot was incredibly crucial for the match, from our point of view it's just a really good pot so it just took me the 3 attempts in the end. For shot L we've got to go to the champion of champions where Luca Brussel is powering in a long red and showing off his Q power. If you're wondering why some of these videos look a bit grainy and have things over the top of them it's because the only clips I could find were actually from my old videos. That's how most of these shots are chosen, from the top 3 shots in videos I've made during the year. Either way this is a very good powerful shot from Luca that I was really struggling with and I kept scattering the balls everywhere each time I missed. I would have liked to have got this one sooner but the power was just really difficult to control. I nearly hit the jaw but actually ended up on top of the brown which wasn't great. It's now time for the fluke of the year. Cue the music. This year it's a straight fight between Scott Donaldson and Kyron Wilson. Both of these shots are brilliant flukes and although Kyron Wilson's fluke is good, Scott Donaldson just has that little bit more, so he's this year's winner. Shot M is obviously going to come to us from the Masters, I mean it's not, it's just a happy coincidence, but either way Neil Robertson powers in this incredible pink, getting the cue ball back nicely on the black. I'm not at all sure how he plays this shot, it's a really difficult pot down the cushion and you have to keep the cue ball top side of the middle pocket and still get it far enough down for the black. I just couldn't play this one right unfortunately. Time for shot N and although he may have seemed quiet at times Matthew Stevens still played a few impressive shots this year and this black was one of them as he managed to get the cue ball all the way around the table perfectly for the red on the top cushion. In fact I think he's got more shots on this list than Judd Trump which you wouldn't expect on a normal year. Either way I've got to spin the cue ball around the cushion with a bit of right hand side and back spin. My first attempt was incredibly close just a little bit too hard. On my second I actually hit it a bit harder 
and just about ended up in position in the red. It didn't happen in quite the same way, but I was left with a very similar shot and easily able to pot it. Shot O comes from the Turkish Masters, which if nothing else gave us a really interesting carpet design. Either way, Sijai Wee managed to play this green and pull the red off the cushion perfectly here. From looking at where he struck the cue ball, he wasn't using any side spin here, he just played it as a stun shot, so I was looking to do the same thing. After a few attempts where I got close, I eventually managed to hit it, but not quite leave the red on into the corner pocket and pushed it a bit too far onto the top cushion. On my very next attempt, however, I did actually manage to make the cannon and pushed it on, but not to the right pocket. However, I could still pot the ball, so I wasn't really too worried about this. Shot P, I believe, is the first inclusion of Judd Trump on this year's list, who managed to pull off this wonder shot at the Scottish Open that required an awful lot of working out. It's a difficult one to hit as well, as you have to catch the first red pretty full. I was a little thin on my second attempt, but it still went in and I ended up in good position on the black. Shot Q comes from the World Championship qualifying. It's almost like I planned this. I don't! Either way, Jackson Page is powering in a long yellow that helped him power through to the main tournament. So as you can see, it only took playing 17 of these shots to make me go a little bit crazy, and we've still got 9 to go, so who knows what will happen before the end. Either way, I was really struggling to play this Jackson Page shot. I couldn't make the white go in the right direction, and when I eventually potted it, I went too far towards the bolt cushion. Shot R is Tepchire or New. Scottish Open playing this exhibition shot on the yellow with the rest. Not only is it difficult to pot the ball like this, but Tepchire also manages to control the cue ball around two cushions with right hand side. A really impressive shot. It's also impressive that I managed to cover up the fact that I confused him for Mark Allen, his opponent in this match, twice there without anyone noticing. That was completely seamless. This shot, however, wasn't quite going so well for me. Even though I managed to pot quite a few of my first attempts, I just couldn't quite control the cue ball around the cushions. When I was lifting the rest up like this, it made it very difficult to move it around, so I didn't have the control I needed in order to pot the yellow and get the white going in exactly the right direction with the right hand side it needed. This just made it very difficult to control, and it seemed like I was steadily getting worse at this shot every time I had a go at it until my 10th attempt when I just about got it good enough. I did it a bit hard though. Shot S is another world championship shot, this time from Matthew Stevens, and this is probably the hardest shot I've had to play all year. The way you have to control the yellow around all the cushions at the right speed to get it in behind the pink and black for a snooker is almost impossible. I lost count on how many tries this took me on my World Championship video, but luckily I managed to get this on my first attempt here. I'm not sure how, it was more luck than judgement, but I'm taking it. You don't think of Mark Selby as playing a lot of exhibition shots, but shot T is a good one, as he manages to pot the pink in the middle pocket and play the cue ball all the way around the angles and back for the black. I always struggle with this shot because for some reason I find it very difficult to avoid the green pocket, and on my first attempt where I more or less played it as good as I could, I actually ended up in the green pocket as expected. I can never work out if this is because the cue ball's too far away from the top pocket, or if I need to get it a little bit closer. Either way, I was struggling to pot the pink at this speed until I got to my eighth attempt where I more or less played the shot perfectly. The cue ball found its way around the angles and ended up in great position position on the black in the same way as Mark Shot did.
shot you is Ali Carter with one of the best snooker escapes of the year. If he doesn't land perfectly on this red, he's likely to leave one on into the middle pocket, and he gets it absolutely spot on. He was 4-3 up in this match and a long way in front in the game, but this great shot resulted in a swift conclusion to the match and it ended pretty soon after this. But I was delighted to get this after one attempt. Shot V comes from the World Championships as well as Stuart Bingham plays a really impressive exhibition shot here, landing perfectly in position on the yellow. I'm not too sure if we found this shot at the time of the World Championships, but I have now so I want to have a go at it. You have to play this shot with backspin and left hand side, and on my first attempt I put too much left hand side on the cue ball. My second attempt went pretty much perfectly. I thought I was a little bit short but could still pot the yellow, but this was roughly where Stuart ended up. Shot W is a Marco Fu shot after we find Esmo in Gibraltar, which is there. Now this shot from Marco Fu in the World Championship qualifying is a bit of a fluke. He's trying to hit this red on the escape from a snooker, but wouldn't have thought he'd be able to pot it. But I'm having a go at it anyway, partly because it wasn't as good a fluke as the other two from earlier, but mostly because Marco Fu has had such a difficult few years not being able to get to tournaments because of Covid and other restrictions, and I really wanted to include him in this video. The shot, however, was proving incredibly difficult. You had to swerve around the brown, and I even hit it a couple of times on the way through, and that allows you to get the right place on the top cushion for the right-hand side to take and hit the right part of the red, at least hopefully, but you have to hit a very narrow portion of the red in order to pot it in the middle pocket, and this was proving more or less impossible. Fortunately, however, on my 13th attempt, basically the first time I hit the right side, I actually potted it, so I was pretty happy with that. Tom Ford had an impressive run at the UK Championships, and shot X is a really tough pot down the cushion that not only was a really crucial shot in the match, it also required a lot of creative thinking to come up with. You have to strike down quite a lot in order to stun it for the blue. I'm not sure what happened here, but it just seemed to hug the cushion, and at this stage I don't really care anymore, I'm just glad it went in. For some reason, the British Open always seems to take place in the middle of British summertime. Either way, shot Y is from Mark Allen, who had a really difficult snooker to escape from, and found a really creative way to get out of it. Mark made this look easy, but it really isn't, because in order to play the cue ball through the pink and black at the right angle to come back for the yellow, you need to play it into the bolt cushion with exactly the right amount of left hand side to widen the angle and make the gap. This means hitting it closer to the green pocket than you normally would, and using the left hand side to get it across the other side of the table, where if you played it into the bolt cushion plain ball and hit the second cushion in the same place, you wouldn't get the same result. I was starting to get really close with this, but wasn't sure I was ever going to hit it, until I actually got to my sixth attempt, where I just about hit it hard enough, and it ended up resting on the yellow. If you've been wondering what's under the tree, it's, it's a bin full of nails. Wonder who's getting that. Either way, Mark Williams is playing a shot of the Masters that really is a complete fluke, but it wasn't as much of a fluke as the other two, so I've got to have a go at it really. I wouldn't have bet against me getting it on my first attempt, because I got it on my first attempt at the Masters video. However, this time I didn't quite get so lucky. It turns out it's very difficult when you don't have your bridge hand on the table to strike the black with your cue as you push it through. I did this on a couple of occasions, and once I nearly potted the pink at the same time, which would have been a disaster. Whatever happened, I was still really pleased to get it after 10 attempts, although I got the hand thing completely wrong.
So it's time to find out this year's winners, and third place goes to Kirk Mathlin with this ridiculous pop down the cushion and position on the black. Second place goes to Mark Allen with this shot all the way round the table for perfect position on the red by the black. This was one of the hardest shots to play of the year. First place definitely goes to Kyron Wilson. Not even the Mark Williams one-handed shot was harder to play than this one. This is about as difficult as anything I've had to play all year. Thank you so much everybody for watching this year, but it's not over yet as we'll be back on New Year's Eve with all of this year's cheekiest doubles. In fact, thanks to whoever it was who gave me that idea a few weeks ago. If you want to see more videos of me recreating shots, have a look at these two. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you next year, or next video I suppose still. Bye.